In this video, we're going to talk about balancing chemical equations. We're going to do two practice problems so you can see how this works with two different chemical reactions. We're going to follow steps that are outlined in a previous video, and you can click the link to view that video if you'd like for a more detailed explanation. So let's check out the first problem here. So here's the first equation that we're going to try to balance. What I do when I approach a problem like this is I separate the equation into two sides. So I'm going to have my product side here on the right and the reactant side over here on the left. And then I'm going to go through and I'm going to list all of the elements in order from metals down to non-metals. And I'm always going to leave the hydrogen and the oxygen last in my list. So I start with the metals. There's one metal here. It's titanium. And then I move to the non-metals. Again, leaving these for the end. And there's chlorine. That's the other non-metal. And so I got titanium, chlorine, hydrogen, oxygen. Do the same on the other side. And then what we're going to do is we're going to count the number of those elements that occur on each side. And for that, we're looking at the subscripts, which are the numbers that come down here after the element. If we don't see a number, that just means there's a one there. We don't write that in. That's just one of that element. So I have one titanium, four chlorines, two hydrogens, one oxygen on the left, over on the right, one titanium, one chlorine, one hydrogen, two oxygens. To balance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the coefficients. That's numbers that come in front. If you don't see anything there, that just means there's a one. Can't change subscripts, so make sure you never change those. You just change the numbers in front. When we change the number in front, that's going to multiply. It's just algebra. It's going to multiply these numbers, these subscripts, by whatever that number is. So let's start moving down our list. We start at the top. Titanium is already good. We have one and one, those match. Down here, we have four and one, those don't match. So I have four chlorines here. I only have one chlorine here, so I'm gonna have to fix that on this side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a four in front of this compound here. I put the four in front, that multiplies everything there by four. And so this is going to give me four chlorines and four hydrogen. So I'm gonna change the numbers over here. Got four and four. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back down the list just to make sure that things are staying balanced. So titanium still at one. That's good. Chlorine's at four. Hydrogen, we have two and four, so that doesn't match. So now I'm going to fix this. I'm going to make this become four. And so I can see I have two right now to start with. So if I put a two in front, that's going to give me four hydrogens because we multiply that by the subscript. We want a two, not a four. Put that two in. And so that's going to give us four hydrogens and two oxygens. And then I can go back through my list and I can see that everything now matches up. And so this is my balanced chemical equation. Let's try one more example. This one's a little bit more challenging. Again, I'm going to separate it into the two sides. I'm going to list all the elements. In this case, we don't have any metals, so we skip right to the non-metals. So I have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Do the same on the other side. And then I'm going to list them, uh, the amounts of each of these. And so I could see that there are seven carbons. And then hydrogen, I have eight hydrogens. And then oxygen appears in two places. I have two oxygens here plus the two oxygens here. We combine all that together. And so we have four oxygens. And then over on the other side, we have one carbon. We have two hydrogens and we have three oxygens because we have two here and one over there. That gives us three. Now I can start trying to balance these. So I have seven carbons here and just one carbon here. So the first thing I'm gonna do I'm going to put a 7 right here in front of that carbon dioxide. And that's going to multiply this stuff by 7. So I'm going to end up with 7 carbons. So we can change this to a 7. And it's going to give me 14 oxygens, because 2 times 7 is 14, plus this one over here, which is 15. And so that's going to change this 3. It's going to go all the way from 3 oxygens to 15. Go back to the top, make sure it's all good here. So we have seven carbons and down here, eight hydrogens and two hydrogens on this side. So 
I'm going to need to get this to turn into 8. So here I can change that from a 1 to a 4. And that's going to multiply all of this by 4. So 4 times 2 is going to give me 8 hydrogens. So I could change this to an 8. But it's also going to affect the oxygen because I'm going to have 4 times 1. So I'm going to have 4 oxygens here plus the 14 over here. So that's going to give me now 18 oxygens. Now I can see carbon's good, hydrogen's good, and now I have 18 oxygens on this side. I only have four on this side. Now I have to be careful here because I have two oxygens in this compound and then the other two are over here. So I'm not going to touch this compound because the carbon and hydrogen are already good. We have seven and eight. And so I'm just going to work with this oxygen. So if I have two over here and I need a total of 18, 18 minus two, that gives me 16 more that I need. So if I put an eight in front of this O2, that gives me eight times two, that's 16, plus that two, that's gonna give me 18. And now you can see everything is balanced. I got seven, eight, and 18. And so this is my balanced chemical equation. Thanks for watching. I hope that was a helpful video. You can support the Science Classroom by subscribing to the channel and by liking this video. And you can also support us on Patreon by clicking the icon there in the video.